Uh, well, thank you for inviting me, uh, Rob Burke and staff. Uh, thank you, uh, Gerard, for giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, your museum, our museum we are so proud of. Um, my name is Michel de Meunck. I am an, uh, um, my daytime job is uh, teaching photography and I'm a volunteer at the Dutch Pinball Museum for one day a week. Um, and I'll give you some introduction about the Dutch Pinball Museum and why you should really come there. Um, <clears throat> this is Delfshaven, Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Um, we are uh, the, the left brown building. Um, it's it's the, the museum. We have some inside of, of, uh, pictures. I'll show you more later on in this presentation. So we came from the Netherlands to the USA. And I think when you're living in the United States, you probably know this painting. Um, it's a painting, it's in the US Capitol, in the Rotunda. Um, it's a painting by uh, Robert Weir. Um, and it's about the Pilgrim Fathers who uh, were leaving um, Rotterdam Delfshaven in the Speedwell and they, they joined the Mayflower and they uh, set sail here to, uh, to the United States. And they, they came from Delfshaven. Uh, not a lot of people know that, but they made a long trip, uh, and I guess most of them ended up in Chicago to make pinball machines. Um, we also made this journey not by boat, but we made it by plane, and we went directly to Chicago. And if you go the other way around, uh, from Chicago to Rotterdam, you probably land in Amsterdam, Schiphol, and then go an hour drive uh, down south, and then you end up in the region of Rotterdam. This is the region of Rotterdam, only 600,000 inhabitants. Um, if you compare that by Chicago, I think it's 2.7 million, so about a fifth. Um, and this is, this is a big region, but if we zoom in a little more, uh, then we go to uh, Rotterdam center, and. I have circled it, Dels Haven is over there. And if you zoom in a little more, you stand on this bridge and you have this view, then you see this. And here on the left, this is where the Pilgrims Fathers departed to, uh, to the United States. And here on the right, we have the Dutch Pinball Museum. So you could really say the Dutch Pinball Museum is worth a pilgrimage. So I guess you all come to the Dutch Pin Museum, um, but, but don't book your tickets yet because I have some information uh, first. Um, let me explain why I'm standing here this day. Uh, this is a bird uh, with a difficult uh, Latin name. Uh, I won't even try to pronounce it, uh, but in Dutch language, we call this a stern, stern. And this is one stern, and this is a flock of sterns. Um, and l for the sake of argument, let's call this a collection of sterns. This is a museum. This is the Chicago uh, Natural History Field Museum, a very nice museum here in the city. Um, this is really a museum. And this is a museum in, in uh, United Kingdom, the Bristol City Museum. Um, they have uh, a collection of birds, as you see. Um, and you probably uh, see the difference between a collection and a museum. Um, a museum needs a collection, but the sole collection is not a museum yet. So what is a museum? Well, a museum uh, displays a collection or parts or a collection Looking at you, Gerard, parts of a collection, not always everything. Um, and the museum preserves stories for uh, coming generations. Uh, and we all know uh, a really famous pinball uh, museum uh, person. Uh, I guess you all know him, Indiana Jones. He quoted, it belongs in the museum. So how did the Dutch Pinball Museum originate? It originated in 2015. And it really started as a collection of pinball games, as we say, a flock of games. 
Uh, Gerard, or Gerard van der Zanden, is the founder uh, and he is still the CEO. He's also an Expo uh, Hall of Fame member. But Gerard wanted more uh, because he, he said pinball is more than fun and games. And I'm thrilled to make a contribution on making the museum more a museum. Uh, and we all know uh, because pinball is culturally significant, it has a roaring history. Uh, with a lot of told and untold stories. And we all know that pinball is technically challenging. Um, and people who don't think pinball is technically challenging, uh, try me at the end of the seminar. Um, a museum, uh, and I, I said it before, a museum uh, preserves. And it preserves not only things, it preserves stories. Uh, and these stories are preserved for the past, present, and future generations. So we try to showcase these stories, and there are a lot of stories to be told. Uh, stories about the technology, uh, stories about the history, about the art, about seduction, about the game, about the makers, uh, and of course about the players. Um, but I think the most important thing about a museum with pinball related stuff is it's about the love of the silver ball. Some people rather call it um, uh, fighting the silver ball, um, but I think love and hate uh, can exist next to each other, as we all see on pin side on a daily basis. Um, but if you um, are in a museum, uh, a pinball museum you want to experience, you want to go back in time, you want to play. Uh, so we often call our museum a museum. It's a, a museum where you can also experience. For instance, a flock of sterns or a flock of Bally Williams or a flock of Gottlieb machines. Um, but the question is, how do you get from a collection to a museum? And I'll take you in this talk about the struggles we uh, we experience in uh, making a museum a museum. And we, because we want to tell the culturally significant stories, uh, so how do we do it? Do that without scaring the public. And maybe you think scaring the public, well, that's a real thing, scaring the public. Um, before I tell you why we are afraid our about scaring the public, we first have to define our target audience. Um, what do you think the target audience of a pinball museum is? Everyone. Pinball players. Pinball players. Uh, when you say everyone, that's a bit difficult because if you are a hairdresser in Chicago, uh, is your, your um, target audience all people with hair or only people with hair in the region of Chicago? Um, someone else? Target audience? Sorry? Yes, children? Well, we, we defined our target audience as follows. We have three um, uh, major things, and, and I'll add a fourth uh, later on. Uh, the pinheads, the people who want to play pinball, who know pinball. I guess a lot of people here in this room call themselves pinheads. Sorry? Pinball enthusiasts. Pinball, do you think it's a better term? Pin, okay, pinball enthusiasts, pinheads, whatever. <laughs> um, I think I think you are you are one of the fourth category, uh, Jonathan. Uh, so 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 I'll, I'll explain later. Um, we have the the nostalgia. Uh, uh, the, those are the people who want to play uh, a pinball machine they used to do in uh, they, they used to play in their youth. And we have uh, people visiting Rotterdam, uh, also known as tourists. So what do these people expect? Well, pinheads or pinball enthusiasts, uh, they expect a lot of machines to play. Uh, nostalgia, they want to play the machine they used to play. So the Adams Family or the pinball machine with the robot girl on the back glass or the pinball machine with the big hat on the, on the play field. Those terms we we, uh, we we hear when people come in. And the tourists, they just want to have a good time. 
uh, and, and talking about the tourists, we are the number one uh, things to do in Rotterdam, so we are very proud of that. Um, and I think there's a fourth category. Thank you. Our fourth category, where, which I think uh, Jonathan belongs to, and maybe uh, some other people here, uh, are the pinball pilgrims. Um, they want to see something special, uh, uh, something special that you cannot experience uh, anywhere else. Uh, so when you are here in, in Chicago and the Pinball Expo, we see a lot of things that are unique and, and we want to see them, we want to play them. Uh, like I wanted to do this week here in Chicago, where we wanted to visit the Art Institute, only to find out that that is closed on Monday and Tuesday. So um, we have to come back to see the famous painting like American Gothic, uh, Nighthawks from, from Hopper, uh, Van Gogh's Yellow Bedroom and Monet's Water Lilies. Uh, so we definitely coming our back. Um, but our target audience in general wants to play pinball uh, and we want to educate them. So that is a struggle because pinball marketeers, well, most of them, are excellent marketeers because we all know how hard it is to walk past a pinball machine and not playing it or we want to look at it we want to see how the state of the machine is is it any good uh, why is it here um, and, and we all know that drinking is an excuse to go to the bar and play some pinball um, so we see Education is boring, especially when it's uh, uh, told by old white men like me. Uh, playing pinball is fun, uh, and that's the struggle we are faced with. So we were thinking about that, and we said we have to give the visitors what they want. They can play pinball. Uh, we have over 100 machines uh, on free play. And after paying the admission fee of 16 euros, it's approximately $17.50, uh, they can play these machines. Uh, along the way, we try to educate them, telling stories, try to get them addicted, um, try to make them pinheads or even better, pinball pilgrims. So we want to tickle them, we want to seduce them, uh, but no long, big stories. Um, remember, most people are on a sort of first date with pinball. So we feed them small snippets to get them interested, to tickle them, seduce them uh, before we get them addicted, like we are, or all are. Uh, and I'll give you some examples on how we try to do that. Um, when you enter the museum, you have to go through the uh, uh, history room, where we have the history from 1770, 70, sorry, 1777 until now. Um, we have that on display. We have a, a great, stunning uh, uh, plexiglass uh, pinball machine. That's the 1971 Stardust. And we have some uh, really nice artifacts in the museum. Uh, like this one, um, a small pinball machine. That's Dennis Nordman's. Um, uh, job in the industry thing where he made this and he got hired by Bolly Williams. Uh, we explain why pinball is called pinball. And we have a big wall with pre-war machines, uh, pinball machines. Um, we call this the wall. Um, and we have information panels scattered throughout the museum. Uh, we define three categories. Uh, the category facts and figures, the category machines, and the category people. And here you see a fact things about the ball and a people panel about Steve Ritchie. I'll zoom in a little more. Um, this one is everything about the ball. And we have these information panels in two languages, in Netherlands, in Dutch, and in English. And um, it's important to have these stories that you can read in, with an uh, with under 30 seconds, because uh, this is a, a great pastime to do between two games. 
Uh, some other examples, uh, some pinball heroes like Roger Sharp and the Adams Family Machine, uh, or um, a panel about lingo in uh, uh, abbreviations in pinball, or as I say, how to scare new people away from the hobby, um, and a panel about uh, Gary Stern. Uh, he was in our museum last month. Um, we try to make our museum a bit thematic, like this one is a music room where we have uh, all musical pins uh, uh, next to each other. And in the back side, we have this panel uh, with black and white photos from uh, a music artists playing pinball. And sometimes people ask, uh, ask us, uh, are, these, all, are the, these people all played in your museum? And we, of course, say yes. Well, a, a little lie is not a problem, I think. Um, but we have a, a really special pinball machine uh, on display, um, and that's uh, the Madonna never made Madonna pinball machine. Python Angelo made a sketch, and this is uh, one of the last sketches remaining because a lot of them were uh, destroyed by the Madonna management, and we even have the invoice he sent to Bally Williams. Uh, another example is these uh, two fun houses and a roadshow. Uh, most people know the 1990 fun house machine. Uh, we have the predecessor uh, from 1956, uh, the fun house, and we have the 1994 roadshow. And next to it, we have a display cabinet with even more information about these games. Uh, for example, uh, the Riverview Amusement Park is a, a big thing in the roadshow and uh, fun house machines. Um, the Riverview Amusement Park was only a few miles away from the uh, Chicago factories. Um, and the fun house pinball is almost an exact copy of the Aladdin's Castle uh, rides over there. And we have some original entrance cards from these rides of the Riverview Park. Um, we have a life-size trans light of, most of, of one of the most iconic pinball machines of all times. And I guess you all see what uh, pinball machine this is. Of course, the Twilight Zone. And even when you go to the restrooms, we don't give you any rest. Uh, because we have what we call toilet stories. Um, for example, why does Humpty Dumpty has six flippers? Um, or uh, a story about um, the SBA dollar, Susan B. Anthony dollar. Uh, a story where, where I came across when I listened to one of my favorite podcasts, uh, The Wedge Heads. Um, talking about wedge heads, of course, we have wedge head machines with an explanation, explanation uh, about it next to it. Uh, and we have, of course, the Humpty Dumpty, um, the fairy tale pins. We have four of the seven fairy tale pins, so we are missing a few. So if someone has some uh, information how to get the other three, um, we would like to have that. Um, we have some uh, uh, plexiglass exhibitions uh, and some original drawings, and all these things are uh, next to playable machines because we want to have people playing machines and be educated at the same time. Um, of course, we want to do even more in the next few years. Um, Gerard has a wish list for pinball machines. He really likes to have the Red Race, the prototype, uh, the three missing machines of the Fairy Tale series, and we would like to have the Total Recall prototype. Uh, I think it was here in Expo 1990. Um, and uh, we talked with Gary Stern about that, but he do doesn't think it's, uh, uh, it exists anymore. I have a wish list for the education department. Uh, I want to have some interviews with engineers and manufacturers. Um, we, uh, we want to know more about seducing the customers to play and to buy pinball machines. Uh, so the marketeers view on making pinball machines. Uh, we want to make exhibitions about the art throughout the decades, uh, the difference between fine art, decorative, decorative art, and applied art. Um, um, the, the Pacific Pinball Museum uh, does these things, uh, for example, with the Pointy People exhibition. And I want to cooperate with other pinball uh, museums and manufacturers. Um, and we all have the same goal to bring pinball to a broader public. 
Um, so surely you can have a great time playing pinball, but I think now we all know that pinball is more than fun and games. Uh, with that, I conclude my talk and um, I'm open for any questions. Are there any questions for me or for uh, Gerard? Yeah, I have a question because oh. I know you have a lot of photos of celebrities on the walls. Have you ever been surprised that people come into town and then there's somebody that walked in that was recognized character? Well, well Gerard knows uh, probably everyone and uh, also famous people. So uh, a famous a famous person can walk by me and I, I don't recognize. <laughs> but, but Gerard, all uh, recognize him that all the, the, those people all. Dutch people, a lot of Dutch people, but also uh, famous people like uh, Mark Tremonti was also re once there, or the former uh, world champion boxing, uh, Rogelio Tour, last time he was there. Uh, we get a lot of uh, famous people because famous people also like pinball. Did you know that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah and they want to have a good time and they will find us. And uh, pinball and famous people com combine and always said it's a free publicity, so if a, f a famous person walk in, I always say get a selfie with him and we post it. And then I get like 300 likes, and if I put something on myself, I get five likes. So yeah. it helps. Yeah. Slash, uh, Slash wanted to come. It was in the Corona area, and he couldn't make it. So it, uh, I think his uh, uh, the his management forbid uh, him to come. So uh, we uh, sent a T-shirt over to his hotel, and the next day, he sent me a picture back uh, wearing our Dutch Pinball Museum shirt with a slash and it was iconic. This is something really to remember. And uh, we met Jack Black. Jack Black is also a very big pinball fan. And we had a great time with the guys from here. Uh, we had dinner with him and uh, after party and everything. So it, uh, if you start a museum, it opens doors. So if you're really into a band or a fan, start a museum and you will meet them. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions? I think over in the back, yes. Uh, regarding your efforts to educate people a little bit, uh, what have you folks done with like tours or docents? Um, we, we, we have uh, uh, self-guided tours in the museum. So when people come in and they are interested, uh, we, we tell them uh, everything about the, the pinball museum. Uh, and uh, the, 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 f the first part, the history room, is, is the part of, of Gerard when people are wanting to know more. Uh, they, they get educated. Um, but what we see, and th that's also the struggle, that people come in and they want to play. That, that's the first thing they want. Okay, they, they go upstairs, they play, and after an hour, um, they, they come down and they want to see uh, also the history. Yes. Other questions? So um, what percentage of the museum would you say is, in terms of visitors, is Dutch? versus foreigners? Um, you, you are asking about uh, what is Dutch and what is uh, English? Okay, yeah. I guess it's 70% uh, uh, from the Netherlands, 30 from from f uh, abroad, yes. Because we, we have a lot of tourists and pil pil pinball pilgrims. So uh, I, I guess that's about uh, correct, yeah. Two questions. One, how many texts do you have? And the uh, other question is, uh, would you consider uh, providing or licensing some of the materials to other pinball museums? Uh, regarding the, f the first question, we have a, a volunteers night at the museum at Wednesday. Wednesday and Saturday and Sunday we are open. So Wednesday evening, uh, the volunteers come in and we have about six volunteers who are doing the maintenance? Ah, ten, about ten. Um, uh, and we, uh, the, sorry, the other question was? Would you consider a license for some of the materials? Yes, I, I, think, I think cooperation is, is a real important thing. Um, 
So uh, like other museums do, they give their information uh, free to other museums. I think, yeah, we, we also want to, want to do that because we all have the same uh, goal to, to bring pub, uh, pinball to the broader pu public, yeah. How many employees work in the museum and how many visitors around you have in the months? Um, the the uh, employees are uh, Gerard and his wife and we have some uh, what we call floor managers. So each day we have about three floor managers and some help at the cafe restaurant. Um, regarding the, uh, the visitors, I guess we have a, around 2,500 visitors a month. So 30,000 30, a year, yeah. Yeah, Dennis over here with the great shirt. Uh, if people over here uh, want to come and visit the museum, what are the opening times and days? Yes, we are open at Wednesday, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, uh, one last question. So we've, we've been lucky enough to visit the museum and it is literally one of the most immersive educational museums we've ever been to. And, and, and being that the, the pilgrims left from the church just down the road, we're definitely... It encourages uh, pinball pilgrimage. Um, quick question, what, what does the future hold for the museum? Uh, expansion, um, continuing to, to grow up in the floors of the museum, things like that. When w did you come over over, uh, over by us? Yeah, we were there last March, you were there December, and then we came in 2018 as well. So we, we've noticed, was it 2019? 2021, excuse me. Yeah, okay, so you all have been in a new new location. Um, since since spring break, we have expanded uh, another floor uh, with education, and we are constantly trying to, to renew our um, uh, the, uh, the, the educational department, and also, of course, bring new pinball machines. Um, I think it's, a, it's an ongoing uh, thing to expand and, and to, to make it more beautiful. Um, so uh, Gerard has bought some things also here in the in the uh, this week. So we probably are are going to uh, exhibit those things in, in the next uh, uh, few months. Yeah. Okay.